Thank you so much for staying with us. You're still watching Good Morning Namibia on this lovely Thursday morning. We continue with matters right here. And of course, we continue to bring you developments both in and across our borders. The second episode of a, of a documentary by Al Jazeera's investigative unit entitled Gold Mafia uncovers matters of alleged money laundering and gold smuggling in Zimbabwe. The documentary also suggests the involvement of senior government officials facilitating this illicit activities, and this has stirred different opinions and feelings amongst the regional and international community. For more insight on this, we now speak to a Zimbabwean political analyst and researcher, that's Dr. Dylan Mangani. Doctor, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, perhaps for the sake of our Namibian audience this morning, just to get an understanding of, you know, the time at which these revelations um, come to the fore, how would you describe, you know, the general circumstances um, in Zimbabwe and the time at which, you know, this documentary has uncovered uh, these findings here? Um, the documentary comes at a time when um, Zimbabwe is heading towards elections. So from a political point of view, I think this raises concerns because there have been concerns that have been looming for some time, especially in the last five years around uh, the legitimacy of the incumbent uh, President Munangagwa. And so I think this also contributes to the discussion around how he has been able to manage Zimbabwe, particularly when some analysts and observers draw parallel lines between him and his former predecessor, uh, President Robert Mugabe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I think also at the same time, it also broadens our conception in terms of the economic uh, activities yes. around Zimbabwe. As you would uh, be aware that the Zimbabwean economy has not been doing much because of the sanction debate that has been there for close to two decades. Yes um uh, lack of foreign direct investment corruption and all these other things so i think this is the context upon which this um documentary issue can be framed and what did what were your first impressions of of, of this documentary dr mangani um from 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 an academic point of view i think uh, this documentary was able to uh, illuminates several issues that are happening. One of them, which has been lingering for some time, is the issue of corruption. Because you would find that some of the uh, figures imp implicated in this documentary had also uh, corruption charges uh, looming around them. One of them, who is purported to be the president's niece, Henrietta Rushwaya, mm -hmm. you would recall that some time ago she was arrested at the Gab Robert Gabriel Mugabe Airport. International Airport yeah. uh, in possession of, of, of gold. And now she is implicated by one uh, 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 ambassador at large that she can make things happen. So it raises eyebrows in terms of what is really actually happening. But as another interesting uh, observation is the parallel structures that seem to be obtaining in Zimbabwe, where you have one ambassador at large who claims to be very, very much influential so sure, in yeah. terms of how uh, contracts are made, how deals can be concluded on behalf of the president. Yep. And one would then ask, where is the Minister of Foreign Affairs in this? Because diplomatically, you would, one would expect that uh, this guy would report to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, but yes. we don't see that. He seems to be bypassing all these relevant uh, departments and reporting directly to the president. Yeah. So it remains to be seen whether uh, his claims can be substantiated. But if it is so, one would expect uh, President Mnangagwa to rein in and, and perhaps make a statement to clear all these things. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think perhaps that's that's the biggest question that you know the the people of Zimbabwe have. Um, while government has pronounced themselves um, through the information ministry, uh, we saw the issue on Tuesday. Uh, there has been no official communication from the presidency, from what we understand at this particular point in time. Uh, what impression has this left on the people of Zimbabwe? Um, you, you know, politically, one would uh, try to make sense of what is happening because uh, there are some rumors that um, the people behind the the documentary 
This is a reflection of maybe political infighting that is happening in in in, in Zanu PF. If we had as we had had towards the elections, mm -hmm. so it will probably be very very um concerning but also at the same time one would wonder how uh, the president would react to this but as i have mentioned earlier on that we the the, the president is riven with uh, the issue of political legitimacy that has been there since the so-called uh, november 2017 coup yeah. Yeah. so one would expect that the president would shed more light on that especially in his effort to address this uh, legitimate question and also be being that he has characterized and depict his administration as the new dispensation which is totally different from the first republic of uh, president robert mugabe and in line with that the general perceptions among zimbabweans would be that the president would be able to say something to that effect yes. particularly when a so-called ambassador at large implicates him and suggests that he has the approval of the president, of the president yes. in terms of how deals can be made. He has the approval of the president in terms of soliciting 30,000 hectares yes. of land given to one family who I think coming in Zimbabwe as an investor. So one would expect the president to say something to that effect, to take the country in confidence to say, this is not how business is done in Zimbabwe. Exactly. And, and therefore, this is what we have decided to do. Exactly. Absolutely right. Uh, and what do you think, you know, is the, the, the capability of the various organs, you know, in the Zimbabwean uh, setup to deal, to investigate with this matter objectively so? And again, I think um, the Zimbabwean public would um, be interested in seeing how the president handles this matter, because for the longest of time, the public perception is that uh, public institutions, Chapter 9 institutions, have been used instrumentally to prosecute the opposition yeah. and perhaps maybe internal opponents within the ruling party zanu PF. Yeah. Um, just recently, we had an issue of one MP, a zanu -PF MP, who was implicated in certain scandals. And we are yet to see how the law takes its course regarding that. Yeah. So I think um, there is a, a, a mismatch between what the public institutions would purport to do on paper and the perceptions that the people have, mm -hmm. because there's just a lot that has been happening in Zimbabwe that the public would expect the government to take it in its confidence and to see things done. By mm -hmm. now, we should have expected to see people being fired. Everyone who has been implicated in this documentary, that the government should have taken the necessary steps to take the public in to its confidence yeah, so sure. that this doesn't appear as a political uh, gerrymandering. Absolutely. Uh, just just looking at you know um, the the legitimate gold industry of Zimbabwe. Um, Al Jazeera contributes you know this gold smuggling due to the central bank's inability um, to take up all the gold in the country. Um, help us understand just how the legitimate industry is doing. We understand it has seen exponential growth um, since 2008 uh, through, of course, the legitimate gold rush uh, method of selling gold. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so as you would understand the context of the Zimbabwean economic situation that uh, the, Zimbabwe, the economy has not been growing for quite some time. Yeah. And of course, around that discussion is, of course, the question of uh, around the sanctions. And the government would then argue to say that Zimbabwe has not been in a position to fully um, express its economic capacity in terms of exports and imports. Yeah. So you have um, two uh, important players that are the artisanal miners contributing to 60%, 7% at least of uh, the, the gold production in Zimbabwe. And of course, the mining companies that are registered. But yes. the challenge is that the law, the Zimbabwean law stipulates that uh, all gold uh, production mm -hmm. should be sold via the Central, Central Reserve Bank, Bank yes. through its com subsidiary company, I think Fidelity Printers, if, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is that um, the Fidelity Printers, sometimes they can delay in payments and then even 
undervalued the prices of this gold, yeah. which then creates fissures in the gold process whereby you have the gold being smuggled out of uh, Zimbabwe. So the central gold buying scheme has not been working for some time, I think because of other factors such as um, the government's failure to properly legalize artisanal miners. Yeah. So you always have these uh, manufacturing of identities such as Makorokoza, illegal partners, mm -hmm. such that they are incapacitated in terms of their activities. So then people then resort to smuggling gold out of the country. And we have seen, a, you know, very um, worrisome developments in the process uh, that has been happening. There has been the rampant use of small uh, planes using the rider strips to avoid fidelity. Wow. There's also been uh, the, the use of porous borders where some of these gold uh, smugglers, yeah. they use uh, border exits, perhaps maybe in conniving with uh, border authorities to do all these things. So it then provides a security dilemma, and it also uh, then creates um, a very difficult, I think, context for um, for 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 even the economy and the Reserve Bank as well, because as you know, that the Zimbabwean Reserve Bank is in need of um, of, of of foreign currency. Very much so right. these issues are suggesting that there is a problem, and the center might not be holding because it creates security issues and also that result from these porous borders. And if you have these small planes that are coming into Zimbabwe unregulated and unmonitored, it creates a security problem even for. Zimbabwe, particularly when we are heading towards the the national election sometime later this Very year. And, and while and while this has been you know an oncoming challenge for for so long, has there been any deliberate action um, towards seeing how the, the the central bank or even the Zimbabwean government can you know really take ownership of all the gold in the country? Has there been any deliberate uh, moves towards that over the years? Um, I. It, it, would be, it would be very difficult to ascertain because uh, what we have in the public domain yeah. and available literature is that you have some individuals in the government and possibly politicians in the ruling party, ZANU-PF, who are also part and parcel of uh, this gold uh, scheme in Zimbabwe. So one becomes a judge and at the same time a police, yeah. and at the same time as a prosecutor. And exactly. I think this then compromises even government's efforts to try and 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 address this, this uh, crisis that is obtaining in Zimbabwe, particularly in the gold industry. Mm -hmm. You mentioned sanctions earlier. What ramifications do you think, you know, the revelations of this documentary uh, may bring upon Zimbabwe? Of course, you know that the country has been hit hard by sanctions in the past and has been trying to recover from that. Uh, but with these revelations, where does this put Zimbabwe? Uh, if you look at it in the wider international relations context, I don't foresee any serious ramifications given the fact that uh, the government's justification for some time and uh, in the absence, of course, of imperial evidence is yeah. that sanctions have caused untold suffering on Zimbabwe and its capacity to turn around the economic fortunes. Exactly. And I think also the Western countries have not made the situation easier regarding uh, the normalization of relations with uh, with the Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So with the, rise of, with the rise of the BRICS countries, I think an alternative has emerged where Zimbabwe since 2005 have adopted the Low East policy. So yeah. Zimbabwe has options at this disposal, disposal in terms of gaining international uh, sympathizers and those that can maybe rally behind the government. So in terms of backlashes and ramifications, we are no longer in a unipolar world, but rather we exist in a multipolar world where the US cannot do it alone. So obviously the traditional critics would be coming from the West, but of course, because of the rise of Russia, China, India, Brazil, yes. to be more specific, we would not expect a backlash as if we were in the early 2000s. Yeah.
Very much so. I just really wanted to gauge you just talking about those countries and, you know, this global shift that we're seeing away from the U.S. dollar. Um, where does this place Zimbabwe once more, um, especially, you know, with that reliance on foreign direct investment, with that reliance on foreign currency? Um, what do you make of, the, of, of that particular uh, geopolitical um, happening right now around the globe? Yeah. I think uh, Zimbabwe cannot be treated in isolation with uh, the the rest of African countries in terms of uh, the idea of Africa establishing an African agency where they can be able Africa can be able to negotiate with these countries on a on a positive some uh, basis, but the reality of the matter is that in international relations superpowers they always follow the same trajectory in terms of hegemonic ambitions. Yep. And one would not expect that the Chinese, Russians, they would uh, behave differently from the Americans because the foreign policy objectives would then remain the same. But when one looks at the historical affinities between uh, Africa and Russia and yeah, China, China forces, yes. there is a basis for thinking that perhaps uh, it will not be business as usual, but these are countries that demonstrate uh, a context-specific motive, uh, understanding the priorities and needs of multipolar developing regions such as Africa. Yeah. So if one goes by that yeah. argument, one would expect that Zimbabwe would also anticipate that the Chinese and the Russians would uh, be more, much more invested, given the fact that Zimbabwe's economic crisis has been there for quite some time, and Zimbabwe is in the is in need of a speedily forward-looking inventory program in, that would resuscitate Absolutely. its economic fortunes. Just looking at, of course, you mentioned 2023 and what a big year this is. Your general elections uh, coming up. Where does this place ZANU PF? What are the odds of uh, Emerson Munangagwa in light of these discoveries here, or alleged discoveries? Um, it, it would remain to be seen how the opposition position itself in terms of uh, winning the hearts and minds of, of the people. And uh, as, as an academic, of course, one would look at the socioeconomic crisis obtaining in Zimbabwe and whether these realities work in uh, in the opposition's favors. Because other critics would then argue to say that for the longest of time, ZANU-PF has dismantled the economy yes. in, in such a way that hunger, poverty, and all these other unnecessary excesses have been weaponized in its favor. So it remains to be seen how the opposition will be able to sell itself beyond rhetoric and also, of course, to appeal to uh, to, 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 to Zimbabweans. Yes. But I think, of course, for some time and to a larger extent, and also in the absence of concrete evidence, ZANU-PF has also been able to position itself as an agent of social change where we have seen a large number, not, not necessarily a large number of people, but a significant number of Zimbabweans that have also benefited from its um, indigenization and nationalistic outfit in, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the economic spectrum, where we have Black uh, artisan miners, yes. where we have Black entrepreneurs and all these other things. So th those repertoires of engagements are quite important in as far as ZANU-PF is able to, to, to narrate the Zimbabwean story and also being an agent of change because of its uh, historic uh, potential development um, a role mm -hmm. in, in Zimbabwe. So these are some of the issues that I think uh, a, a one would look at regarding the, 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 the elections. Yeah. And then you would then have a picture in terms of uh, what could possibly be the outcome to uh, these elections. Very much. Of course, uh, we continue to keep our eye on the revelations of these gold mafia uh, episodes. Um, just looking at, of course, the light that Al Jazeera has been able to shed, not only on, you know, um, 
alleged crimes, basically, in, in Zimbabwe, but also in countries such as Namibia, uh, we, of course, had our own revelation through Al Jazeera as well uh, in relation to a fish rot scandal. Um, but what does this, these documentaries, you know, these revelations, these investigations say about, you know, the broader African context and the exploitation of its minerals, not only by, you know, um, foreigners, but Africans themselves? I, I think um, there are several issues that come to mind. One of them is uh, the hotly contested issue around uh, race and racial politics, uh, especially coming from liberation movements. We, there has been the talk of white monopoly capital, particularly in former white settler colonies, Namibia, uh, Zimbabwe, South yeah. Africa, you name it. And the impression that is given is that um, these are people that have been responsible for all the ills that societies, that, that, that people in these three societies um, are experiencing. And when you look at the Al Jazeera documentary, you have uh, very powerful, rich white people who have been implicated mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe. And yet ZANU-PF has also been claiming to be uh, at the forefront of um, nativism. Yeah. So there are these inherent contradictions that are now found, which begs the mind you know, to ask whether these liberation movements are actually serious yeah. about uh, changing society and especially the historical questions around racial politics Land, and around the economic transformation as well. Yeah. Because what we have is uh, South Africa being at the forefront of white monopoly capital, the ANC not doing much to address historical imbalances, yeah. ZANU-PF having been used as a yardstick to measure that. But then we have these allegations. And until they are proven as just mere allegations, I think this will always they put a dent on ZANU-PF's commitment to yeah. um, historical imbalances and its rhetoric around a white uh, settler monopoly capital. Very much. Doctor, just uh, before we let you go, uh, Zimbabweans are expected to take to, take to the streets um, of uh, the country that's tomorrow in protest of these discoveries. Just what do you think are the sentiments, the general sentiments around uh, Zimbabweans? What would they like to see um, in light of these uh, findings here? I think um, the, the, the the crisis in Zimbabwe has been obtaining for more than two decades. And you one would understand the concerns uh, that Zimbabweans have, particularly those in the diaspora who um, uh, who have been subjected to various uh, um, legal and illegal uh, processes. Mm -hmm. And who would then expect that if the crisis, if the economy in Zimbabwe uh, gets better, one would possibly go back home and find a footing there? So I think it is in, it, within that context that these frustrations and sentiments also have to seem to also have to find expression. And also, particularly around the fact that uh, a number of Zimbabweans. Uh, expected to see change following the 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 the, the, the so-called military assisted transition in November, yeah. and five years down the line, there's not much that uh, is available for people to talk about. So I think it is also in that context of our disappointment that there has been a slow reformation agenda on the part of ZANU PF and on the part of the government. So you then find these, uh, these, this, this dissatisfaction, if I might support it like that. Doc, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, we'll continue to gauge you as things unravel. Uh, thank you for your insight. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, the Zimbabwean experience with us this morning. Thank you so much for having us. There you have it. That's uh, Dr. Dylan Mangani, who is a political analyst and a researcher, just talking to us about, of course, Al, Jazeera, Al Jazeera's investigative unit's gold mafia documentary series uh, that has come out of late. 
portraying, that is, the gold smuggling and money laundering um, alleged that is, of course, happening in Zimbabwe. Dr. Dillon just taking us through the political landscape as well as what this means um, for the country uh, in light of these revelations. To stay with us, we have more interviews coming your way.